Hi guys, today I am talking a little bit about relationships and why communication can be so goddamn difficult. Now it's such a paradox, I mean the person that we are most physically intimate with, that we struggle to be emotionally vulnerable with and to communicate um, our deepest fears and our deepest insecurities with. However, there is not one person in the world who isn't triggered in some way, shape or form by their partner. Ultimately, that's what our relationships do. They highlight areas that are very vulnerable, that are very internal. And we can either take this as an opportunity to heal through those vulnerabilities and insecurities or run from them. And generally the relationships where both parties are running from their vulnerabilities, their triggers and their insecurities, um, we see a breakdown or at least um, we see difficulties and struggles where if both parties can recognize where their insecurities and where their differences lie, what is being triggered in them, what is being brought up and work through it and resolve it both on an individual basis and as a unit, then both people can grow together and flourish and develop and become better people as a result. That being said, it's not easy. And oftentimes when it comes to um, our relationships, we bring with us so much baggage from our past. We bring past pains, past experiences. We also bring the blueprint of our um, family of origin. So despite the fact that we may have, um, I suppose, observed our, our parents and thought, right, I'm never going to be like that. Oftentimes we imitate their behaviours without even being aware of it, you know. And it's just really important that you're able to be objective because in our relationships, oftentimes we can feel our most defensive. We can feel like we need to be on guard or wary and we're not able to objectively see the role that we have in the issues that we are experiencing. And it's bizarre, like when couples um, talk about the, the issues that they're experiencing, it tends to be the same theme over and over again. Particularly when kids become involved, you know, it's like as if um, it's nearly me versus you, as opposed to me and you versus the rest of the world. Um, so it's about getting that togetherness back. That being said, there are certain things that you can do in order to enhance the communication between you. First of all, uh, both parties on an individual level can get in touch with their triggers and their insecurities. So as opposed to running from them or becoming highly defensive, you can lean into them a little bit or get some help in leaning into them a little bit and discover what it is that they are trying to tell you because ultimately these are the, the clue, the, the arrows that point you in the direction of where you need to do your work. As also, you need to schedule time for each other and really be present with each other. I mean, oftentimes we give so much energy to our external world. We give so much energy to our kids. We give so much energy to our job and to our friends. And when we come home, we have very little left to give. And as a result, you'll often find both parties sitting on their phones uh, for two hours at night, not even talking to each other, being in no ways present with each other, being no ways affectionate, being no ways close. And I mean, that's not the way it was at the beginning. And a lot of people would say, oh, I just want the same excitement, the same fun, the same ra romance that we experienced way back when. But the thing is, in order to have those experiences, you need to do the same thing. You need to be investing in your uh, relationship the, the same way as you did at the offset. Um, you know, when you used to kind of make sure that you always texted somebody to let them know you were thinking of them. Or, you know, you always talked to them wherever you went. or you know, Little things like that make all the difference and they really build the intimacy and the romance because ultimately the intimacy isn't about the physical side of things it's about the little handholds the touches the the sweet words it's about doing nice things for each other it's about recognizing the other person seeing the other person in their struggles in their hard times and helping them out and this takes effort. I mean, we have to come into our relationship realizing that if you want things to run smoothly, there is a lot of conscious effort, a lot of forgiveness, a lot of surrender, and a hell of a lot of compromise um, uh, required. 
That being said, if you are open to allowing yourself to be vulnerable, if you are open to recognizing the areas which you need to work on in order for you to show up in the best way possible so that ultimately you can show up for your partner in the similar fashion. Sorry guys, I just had to stop the video there for a second. There was a fly going around the place driving me bananas. Anyway, so just a few of the things that you can do in order to improve relations between yourself and your partner. Try to avoid mind reading. Try to avoid, avoid assuming that you know what your partner is thinking. No matter how long you have been with them and how much you think you can predict their reality, you genuinely never know unless you discuss it with them openly. Always create a safe space for your partner. Oftentimes we want, we want, we want, we want the connection, we want the communication and we don't always um, give the same thing as we expect in return. So whatever it is that you need from your partner, make sure that you're also giving the same because um, it's a reciprocal thing. I mean, you need to, oftentimes we, we feel like by shutting off from our partner, we punish them into doing what, um, what we want however that actually has the opposite effect it actually just ends up creating this massive um distance between the two of you so just be very mindful of some of the ways in which you go about getting your partner's attention i mean ultimately the best way to do it is to talk to them to actually be open with them to be vulnerable with them as much as possible when you do have time with your partner be present with them and try to avoid having all the discussions about practical things like the kids. You know, try to bring back your hopes and your dreams into it. Try to bring back the fun, fun, the flirtation. You know, tell each other how much you admire each other. Be kind to each other. Be physically affectionate as often as possible. You know, just little handholds, little hugs here and there makes all of the difference. Try not to have many conversations really angry. Try to work through your own uh, thoughts on things before you go in all guns blazing because ultimately your partner shouldn't be the one who takes the, the brunt of your anger. You should try and work through it and diffuse it first, even if you feel you've been wronged. Um, there is no point being extremely explosive. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to your partner. I mean, ultimately, as I said, we tend to give all of our energy outside of our relationship and then we've very little left for our partner so make sure you make time for each other make sure you schedule regular um audits for want of a better word for your relationship so you sit down and discuss okay what's working and what's not and do this even if things are running smoothly because at least then you're always in regular contact about what each other's needs are what's going on for each other and you're up to speed with with what um is needed for the relationship to continue to flourish try to do things by yourself by yourselves as much as possible even if you have kids it's important to uh, prioritize time uh, for yourselves as a couple and just try to remember as I said that this is the person who's meant to be on your team it's not you versus them it's you and them always bear that in mind I mean ultimately our relationships can become a place of contempt of um, defensiveness of antagonism of sarcasm you know and and um, you wouldn't do this to other people outside of the home so why do it inside of the home. Why always criticize? Why always feel a need to put down? If there's something that you want to see different, express it, yes, but express it in a very mature and kind fashion. So these are just some ways in which you can improve the communication between yourself and your partner. If this is something you'd like to discuss a little bit further, get in touch with me on the website. It's fundamentals.ie. You'll also catch me on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, both of those pages are called Fundamentals. I do a very regular content on my YouTube channel, uh, which is Fiona Feely. So go check it out. All things mental health, how to improve your relationship with yourself. So ultimately, you can improve your relationship with others.